Hello, you're watching Walking and Talking with Phoenix, and today I, we're touching on being addicted to capitalism. So where do we start? Well, let's not be too distracted by the giant fit behind me. I mean, it's, it's pretty much what it looks like, right? Capitalism, capitalism, capitalism. Comfy nights in luxurious homes, on swoosh couches or swish couches, and massive TV screens, Blu-ray 3D films, boggling our minds, best that food has to offer, in the best of fridges, in the nicest of kitchens, blah, 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 blah. Nice living, basically. Nice living with comfort, luxury, expendable luxury, and convenience. You know, fast food, slow food, healthy food, junk food, and everything in between those categories. It's endless what one can do, what one can choose from. It's endless the ways one can entertain themselves and others. It's endless how we can pass time. It's so endless. I think that people are more inclined to get bored, but I've already done a video on boredom, and this isn't about boredom. This is about how we're addicted to capitalism and everything it affords us more so. Meaning we're addicted, I guess, to convenience in excess. Uh, we're addicted to luxuries and goods and services in excess. Maybe we're just in general addicted to excess. Excess, you know, control, excess freedom, as opposed to having to go out on a limb for anything and work our balls off unless you're born on the lower end of the ladder. Sorry, guys. It's understandable how one or 1,000 or 1 billion or 6 billion people can become addicted to this concept of the passing, you know, the, the salvaging of resources and the selling of you know, product, manufacturing and selling a product. It's Id ideal, I guess, and it's attractive to think of our lives as being wrapped up nicely in boxes, which you can easily buy whatever life you want on a shelf. And every accessory you can need for that life you can buy on a shelf. It's very appealing. But what we don't consider so much is where are all those packaged goods and where our nice little wrapped up packaged lives come from and what it takes to produce it all. I could go on to pollution and I could go on to how the world and the atmosphere, the earth, the oceans are suffering as a result. I can go on about murder and war for oil while using false flag reasons to justify it all. You know, acting virtuous to achieve in virtuous ends. I could talk about how humanity is becoming selfish, materialistic, and complacent, never satisfied, never comfortable enough, always needing more. And I could talk about how all the other animals in the world, in this environment, are also suffering. Many aren't already extinct, on the brink of extinction and inevitably moving towards extinction. Yeah, I could talk about all that, but I won't. I'm not here to talk about all of the effects of capitalism, you know, and there are many things I haven't even touched on, such as crime, such as class wars, the great divide, besides the rich, which keep getting richer and heavier pocketed and the poor, which keep getting poorer and broken backed with empty pockets. But it's not, I'm not going to touch on any of that because if you want to see the effects of capitalism, look away from the shelves of all the nicely wrapped packaged lives and accessories and goods which keep you entertained and distracted. Look away from all of the luxury, all the nice things, all the flashing lights and pretty colors and do a bit of research. Go online, watch documentaries, and look to those parts of the world where all of this stuff comes from. Look to those parts of the world that are paying the true price for our convenience and for our freedom. And you'll understand, you'll see very clearly all of the effects, all of the consequences to this way of life. This capitalistic model, which works in a linear in a as a linear system, it's not cyclic, you know, it doesn't meet, meet full circle, so there's no open ends, and rubbish just keeps piling up 
at the end of the conveyor belt, you know, there's no recycling ideal in it. It wasn't built to last forever, it wasn't built to be sustainable, yet it keeps growing and consuming everything more and more. Look everywhere else except that which you use to justify all of this, except that which you use to justify getting on the treadmill every day and pushing whatever it is you're pushing. And this especially applies to those that are pushing immoral, exploitive products and goods and services. Those that are supporting ill-willed corporations just because they get paid well, despite what it actually does and its effect it has on everyone. Be the change you want to be, right? That's what they say. People don't need to be changing anything. Not the people that have enough change in their pockets to buy whatever they need. But at the end of the day, like those Indian dudes said, it's only after the last fish has been poisoned, the last river been poisoned, and the air polluted, and blah, 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 that man will finally realize you can't eat money. And I guess that's the point, is we need to really start waking up, stop being so selfish like little children, just stuck in rapture and delight in this candy shop, avoiding and ignoring the decay, the true decay that our excesses is, is, is taking effect for everyone else, is causing for everyone else. We need to start taking responsibility for our actions and even the parts that we play in greater actions. Just because your role has been compartmentalized, excuse me, just because your role has been compartmentalized and you're only acting on run runger, run rung of a massive ladder or one part of a larger process, it doesn't relieve you of guilt, it doesn't relieve you of responsibility, you're still part of everything that is involved in that chain of events. And if that chain of events, ultimately, whether the beginning, middle or end, isn't contributing to the world for the better, then you are responsible directly for making the world a worse place. And I hope when you're sitting back and you're watching your nice flat screen and shoving your face hole with yummy delight, that all of that is enough to make it worth your while and everyone else's. History is in your hands, not the people who write it. Yeah. So... History books tend to be written in a certain light, which makes our way of living seem all right. But those that suffer, those that never have the power to write the history books, they can tell you a different story. Believe me, I hope when you die, you're reincarnated as one of those people, so you can gain some perspective. Thanks.